Right, right, look, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Horizon Zero Dawn is the best PlayStation 4 exclusive on PlayStation Now, right now. Mainly because it replaced God of War when that came off, and Uncharted 4. But, you know, you gotta play the hand you're dealt with these subscription services. I found PlayStation Now quite unique as a video game subscription service because it's also a streaming service, and it has that part nailed down pretty good. I've been consistently impressed by how smooth everything is. You just find a game, you click play, you wait about a minute and you're good to go. And that hasn't really been replicated anywhere else. I mean, we have Stadia, which is a streaming service, but <laughs> it's not good. The caveat I found is that PlayStation Now is kind of like a revolving door when it comes to the AAA titles. So big names like God of War and Uncharted came off the service in January and Horizon Zero Dawn came on off the bench. And it's only here till April, which isn't that long considering the game is a big AAA RPG. It took me 35 hours-ish to finish the main story. And if you want to go down the completionist route, there's the new game plus, there's DLC, and there's loads of side missions. So, you know, you could rack up 75 hours, 100 hours if you really wanted to. So if you're going to commit that many hours to the game, you need to know whether it's good. So right, roll a clip. Horizon Zero Dawn tells the tale of Aloy. Aloy! Ooh, pretty fond of that name. The matriarchs entrust Aloy to Rost, an outcast. As Aloy grows up, Rost teaches her how to survive as an outsider. All right, it's time to throw some rocks. Foraging for food and hunting machines for supplies. As much as Aloy admires Rost, she longs to know who her real parents are. And the matriarchs hold the answer, but the strict rules of the Nora tribe forbid anyone from speaking to outcasts. Rost explains that if Aloy partakes in the proving, she will be accepted as a Nora brave and can find out her parents' lineage from the matriarchs. So, we can tick off the box marked Journey of Self-Discovery on the AAA RPG plot checklist. We can also tick the box marked Growing Up Montage. and besting childhood rival, and parental figure is killed, giving you the resolve to go the rest of your journey alone. Survive. I'm not sure if it's a spoiler, if I could see it coming after the first 15 minutes, but yeah, he's, he's really dead. Super dead, in fact. Oh, also when you're a wee sprog, you fall into a cave and find this thing called a focus. It's a relic from the ancient metal world that enhances your sight, scanning machines and wildlife and stuff like that. That's the last one. Yeah, that bit's quite important. I probably should have mentioned that before, but uh, there you go. When you wake up from the adopted dad dying thing, the matriarchs tell you that you had no mother. You were found in the womb of the mountain, whatever that is. <laughs> So, with more questions than answers, you set off into the world alone, and determined to find out who you are. So the story's opening fits in with the usual tropes of the genre, but Horizon Zero Dawn held my interest thanks to its setting. It's a mesh of Celtic warrior tribes and advanced robotics. A weird and very unusual mix, but one that absolutely works aesthetically. You encounter these incredible machines. There are herds of them that graze peacefully, with these pesky little bodyguards called Watchers that patrol the outskirts and alert the herd if they spot you. There are Striders and Longhorns that you can override and use as mounts. And then there are the long necks. After you stop staring in awe from the ground, you realize that they're actually clever spins on towers that open up new areas of the map if you can climb to the top of them. They're not all so graceful. Uh, there are plenty of aggressive ones that spit fire, or the tiger looking ones that just want to maul your face off. Zero Dawn is split between hunting machines and fighting other tribes, but I had the most fun discovering new species of machine and admiring their design. Like, look at this crocodile thing that just so you have to set its ribs on fire and it charges at you. And it's just crazy. Love that crocodile, dude. Anyway, 
I found the character animations to be a bit more hit and miss. Climbing is fast and fluid if you're following the yellow brave trails, but anywhere else it feels pretty awful. The climbing animations are only possible on the trails, so you're left to just kind of jump and wiggle over rocks. It feels very wrong, but it kind of works, so it still tried to do it to avoid going all the way around mountains. But then you hit an invisible wall and you have to go back anyway, so it's quickest to just stick to the roads. As for facial expressions and character movements, sometimes Aloy will say a lot just from the subtle look on here. her face or her body language. And other times she just looks, I don't know, like, she's not very well. In terms of RPG elements, everything is substantial. There are plenty of weapons and armor, and room to upgrade both through modifications. You can also upgrade your skills in a variety of ways, from silent sprinting to double and triple arrows, and repairing overridden machines. There are hundreds of missions that supplement the main story, from side quests to bandit camps to errands. I don't know why you'd call it an errand, because that makes me not want to complete it, but, you know, they're there if you want to collect some rabbits or something. I brought you rabbits, Scotta. A lot of the side missions play out the same way. Go to waypoint, track some footprints to a undisclosed waypoint, then attack some the machines or collect something or attack some people. But there are enough interesting ones to stop you simply following the main quest. Cauldrons are underground lairs you must sneak through before facing a high level machine at the end, like the crazy crocodile guy. That was hit, that was from that. <laughs> Defeat that and you can unlock more machines to override, turning them into temporary allies. So Horizon Zero Dawn has all the elements of a AAA RPG. A beautiful setting and a strong enough sense of progression that you can happily pour hours into. Aloy's motives might feel familiar, but she has enough nuance as a character to want to move forward. There is just one glaring problem I have with this game, and it's that the stealth doesn't work. I mean, it works as a mechanic in the game. You hide in the bushes, you whistle or throw rocks to draw in a machine's attention and then attack when they're close enough. But in the context of Horizon Zero Dawn's world, stealth just doesn't work for me. Destiny has tied Aloy and this ancient relic together, granting you incredible foresight. You can scan the world for machines, identify their weak points and their weaknesses. You can even track their walking pattern to sneak around them or line yourself up for the perfect silent kill. You took this artifact from the machine world, but those machines can't see you if you are hidden in, in the grass, you know? You couldn't have made the grass just a couple of inches taller, so my head wasn't sticking out. I get that this is just how stealth works in video games. You have to suspend your disbelief to a certain point. Everyone's a little bit, you know, slow to react. Hiding in the darkness in Splinter Cell, grappling to gargoyles in Batman. I'm not suggesting the formula doesn't work, but at a certain point you cross a limit from manipulating the AI to the AI being oblivious and the first gives you a feeling of being in control, the second just breaks your immersion. It already feels like a stretch to accept that these machines are less perceptive than humans, but you know, I can just about get there. But not when I'm faced with this. I know you're there, I can smell it. For all the analysis and the insight that the focus offers you, the most effective tactic is still hide in the grass, whistle at a robot, and take it down, and rinse and repeat. The funny thing is that I'm making it sound like stealth makes the game easy, but it's not. It's actually really difficult. If you get caught, all hell breaks loose, and there isn't enough depth to the melee combat to make that a fun option. So, I either cleared a level stealthily, but thought it was because, you know, I was taking out idiots, or I blew my cover and had to bash everything like a maniac. Like I said, I'm not necessarily blaming the mechanics of Horizon Zero Dawn, and I don't think it does this any worse than other games. I just feel like this is a massive plot hole that isn't explained and isn't tr like they didn't even try <laughs> like you you're not you're taller than the grass doesn't make any sense like you think because i'm a red that you're a redhead you think that's that's enough like your nose is in their face why isn't the grass a little bit taller and why is it the only thing i can hide in oh you gotta be kidding me 
Steam. Steam. I, I did have fun playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Genuinely did. I just wish it didn't replace God of War. That's what it comes down to. And PlayStation Now isn't the only subscription service to have games on rotation. It's just of the subscriptions, it's the one that does it the most frequently. And it kind of seems like Sony wants the service to seem more like a sample platter of all the games. Uh, well, at least PlayStation 4 exclusives. Um, probably because they still want you to pay full price for them. Which makes sense, because people probably still do. And if they replace Horizon Zero Dawn at the end of April with another PlayStation 4 exclusive, Spider-Man, then, you know, no complaints, I suppose. Anyway, that's it. I'm actually moving away from reviews for a little bit because I want to dive into subscriptions, the specifics of them, the games and the libraries and the price and do kind of more consumable content on the value of those subscriptions, I suppose. Um, so if you want to see that, well, actually, no, wait, let me. If you like this video, <laughs> drop a like. If you like what I just said and you like the idea, drop a subscribe and drop a comment in the comment section if you want me to play a certain game on PlayStation Now or any subscription really i'll do anything i'm taking i'm i'm in a free i'm an open book i'll take whatever you want i want to play something terrible in fact because it's fun to complain about stuff so um all right yeah that's about it what are you still doing there? get out get out